Hi, my name is Diamond. I live in the U.S. and I want to introduce you to Pastoral Care and Leadership Institute, whose vision is to equip Christians with sound biblical truth at the comfort of their homes. As you join Pastoral Care course, you will learn how to study the Bible and draw contextual interpretations to God's Word, and your ability to communicate the Gospel will be enhanced. I am inviting you to join the next online course. To register, please follow the link below or send us an email at pastoralcareleadership at gmail.com or send a message on WhatsApp. Thank you. Welcome back. We're talking about what is real and what is fictional. For some of us, it's like Jesus is a fiction. Does it look real to us? Even though people talk about Jesus, we talk about heaven, we talk about his goodness and all that. But not everyone who serves God can truly say that Jesus is real. If they tell you, for example, there is no hellfire, there is no hell, we you still serve Jesus? If you have opportunity to deny Jesus million dollar or an opportunity to forget pursuing heaven for a billion dollar, will you accept the finance? So these are things that are deep and rooted in the heart of men that uh, a lot of people um, need to address. Because if, if, if we don't address it at the foundational level, what we learn, whatever we learn will just be like a mere exercise. So basically, there are, there are things to note in this program. There are people who are called tastes. A taste is a person who believes God. And when you find such people, when you tell them about God, they will listen to you. When you tell them about the God of the universe, they will identify with you. When you tell them about uh, uh, um, the God that will judge the good and evil, they will understand what you are saying. But we have another group called the Atheist. For those of us in, in the Western world, you probably would have found that you find more Atheist in the Western world than taste. The Atheist are people who believe there is no God. They believe that man is God. They believe that everything around man is centered on this earth. After this earth, every other thing that will happen is about, about human invention. So all of these personalities, you find them. And the a lot of it is that the high rates of the younger generation are becoming a taste because they have carefully and logically looked at our confession, looked at our own expression. It doesn't relate with our conviction. We have talked so much about heaven, but we are always quick to do things that shows to them that we don't believe there is heaven. Like the popular saying here that every man wants to go to heaven, but no one wants to die. So you see that the next generation are doubting the existence, the reality of Jesus, the reality of heaven, this reality about God. Because they are thinking that it's just a scam or it's just a fiction. It's just what we just believed. As a matter of fact, 
they believe that we are just high with one lie or the other claiming that there is one heaven. Then we have the agnostic. The agnostic person is a person who believes we cannot be sure whether God, whether or not God exists. The agnostic, I have met one. She was actually one of my friend's wife. So when we are talking, she was pushing away religious talk and all that and all that. When it got to a point, I asked her a very direct and simple question. I asked her a question. Do you believe that this earth was created by someone? or by a being. She was paused, she paused for a while. After some time, she said, she believed that there is a spiritual being somewhere, but she cannot really tell who that being is. But right now, there are so many religion all over the earth that she doesn't even know which one is right. Whether it's Christianity, whether it's Buddhism, whether it's Islam, you know, whether it's Amok, whether it's Ekaka, whether it's um, all, whether it's Krishna movement. So she just mentioned some of those things. I was like, wow. So, but it is better you seek that God to, to get your validity. Because if you believe there is a God and you are not sure of the God, then you need to find that God. So people want to see the God we talk about, not just by we talking about him, but by the kind of life we live. So there are so many philosophies we need to establish in this class. And then um, we'll look at two main philosophies. We have the theological arguments. These are people who have their own what view. Then we have cosmological arguments. They are arguing about the existence of God. So they don't want to hear anything scripture. If you find them and you are quoting scripture or, or you are quoting the, the, the Bible or the Quran, they will just turn their eyes off you. And they just think you are you are already in the wrong path. So who are those who are the 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 tell you logical argumenters? Number one, they are people. The tellers means actually purpose. They are people who want to argue about the purpose of things. Then we have the cosmos. The people who look at the universe. They are the. They are those who want to know if there is really a God who created it. Maybe you have heard of the archaeologists, people who try to go and prove they are looking for the Garden of Eden. They are trying to look for the Ark of Noah. They are trying to look for, uh, they have gone to the Red Sea, where the Bible says that the Israelites passed through the Red Sea on a bare ground. They are trying to go far to, to make research to prove if these things are true. But the question is, what do you think the logical and the cosmological arguments could possibly be? Here yeah, it is. The first set are saying the universe is too ordered and complicated to have come about by random chance. Therefore, it must have been designed. You may have read of the theory of evolution, the Big Bang theory, that it said the Earth came into existence by a Big Bang. And that's how everything began on Earth. They have made a lot of people to believe it. But those who are logical are beginning to ask questions that the way the mountains are, the sky, the moon, the star, these things cannot just be something that happened by chance. So sometimes 
when you want to minister or, or preach about this God to people, it's not so much from the Bible first. It is when they have known the, the God, they have experienced that God, they can now start believing the Bible. Most times, they want to think about the God who made it possible for the sun to show up when it ought to show up and they made it possible for the stars to show up in the night. This must not be by chance. It, the earth cannot be something that happened by accident. Then they also have this concept that a design needs a designer. That the one who created the universe is God. Because no matter the material you are putting on, it didn't come of the spiritual realm. It was made. Any cloth you put on today was sewn by, by a designer. So everything you find on this universe, on this earth, proves that there is a God. Most Christians believe that Genesis account of creation supports this argument as Genesis shows that God planned the development of the world. Now, if you must balance your Christian worldview, you must believe in Genesis. You must believe in the creation of the world because the people who are not Christians can identify the creation story more than the story of Abraham, the story of David, the story of Jacob, the story of Ishmael. Most people will not believe that story more because they don't believe that the word, the Bible, the stories in the Bible are true. You can't blame them because they are human beings. But for us to reach out and engage them, we must understand that God put creation in place. As we study, we will discover how God revealed his nature and his character through creation. Then the second set is the cosmological argument. This set of people says that the universe is perfect and well-ordered. As the universe exists, it must have a cause. That this earth has, has a reason. They also believe that for everything that exists, there must be a cause for it. Anything you find on earth, the birds, snakes, animals, the flying creature, the crawling creature, the creature that are swimming in the sea, in the rivers, they all have a purpose. They, they, they all have a reason. And that is the reason why some people begin to believe that there had to be something eternal that was not caused by anything. There have to be something eternal. Something must have created us. Let us just, just say a being. There must be someone somewhere that organized this earth to be. Because first thing you can, you can ask people, how come human beings are reproduced without money? How come that human beings are reproduced on earth by a seed? Now, let's take human beings out of it. Animals. Animals, how come they know how to have sexual intercourse? They know how to protect they are young ones. Which school did they go to? Which university did the dogs go to? The cat goes to? Who schooled them? Which lecturer? Who trained them? It is, it is sure that there is someone who is in Tana that gave this order. And that in Tana first course is God. So whoever you meet, you may need to understand that 
there are so many questions in the heart of men. And uh, probably you are in class here, you are still thinking, is there God? Is there no God? But these are the two questions we are going to leave us with before we take our question time. What other reason do you think Christians might give for their belief in the existence of God? This is a takeaway for you. What are the reasons you, you can give for, for people to believe that there is God? And the, the second question, is it possible for something to happen that has no cause? Is it possible for the earth to be in existence? Is it possible for man to be on earth without going to give account about his life on earth? So these are the two questions I have before us. Thank you very much. So please, I will stop here because our time is already fast spent so we can take questions. Thank you.